Okay, so I've decided to cut down this tree because it's a, a dead stand and so the first job is of course look up what I'm checking for is um, dead branches that can fall down any issues with the you know getting entangled in other branches and stuff so it looks fairly okay um, the main thing is it's kind of leaning on this tree over here so uh, I'm going to fall it slightly angled off its lean to hopefully get it down between here the other thing to do is then clear out your uh, escape route so if my falling direction is this way I want my escape routes to be off the tree at 45 degrees so that will mean I'm running off um, in this direction here or here I'm still going to clear that out a bit more with a machete but um, you want at least two options anyway what you don't want to do is run straight back from the following direction because sometimes the tree can uh, slip back off the stump if you've cut an incorrect notch and uh, it'll get you another thing to watch out for is especially on dead trees or semi-rotten or whatever um, if the top's caught up in something as it falls it will snap in the middle and it will actually kind of fold back onto you um, so you can still be hit so when you're looking for the tree and it's about to fall uh, you want to make sure it's not falling back onto you and you know you kind of have to have a eyes on the back of your head okay for the face cut the first thing I want to do is um, check the there's not these buttress roots going to interfere with my felling direction so you want to keep it as low as possible but um, just about those sort of buttress roots and uh, get a feel for where the, the cut's going to point once it's done I'm also um, keeping my leg that's the if that's a line of glances I'm keeping my leg uh, beyond that or some people prefer to stand here and further away but the main thing is just don't keep your leg on that line of glances stance wise I actually prefer a wider stance some people seem to keep their feet together like this and cut like that which is fine but just personal preference I like to stand like this and I feel that gives me more power but uh, yeah Main thing is watch out for those glances coming this way. It also helps if you're keeping the stump low. What I don't want to see people doing is uh, coming like this, up high, like in competition. When you have a high stump like that, it's untidy. But your glance is extremely dangerous because rather than glancing down and coming on the ground now I'm dealing with glances that are coming down straight into my shin and kneecap and all those um, things that are vital to you not being a cripple so you know if I see people like doing this uh, in the Coldwell Challenge um, put it this way I'm not going to be very pleased This, especially this undercut. This undercut is the most dangerous swing you can use with an axe. Because when it glances, it comes straight into your head. And uh, you probably won't need a wheelchair, but a coffin instead. So what I do is I figure out how high I want my notch. And uh, I'll go about an inch above it and put the first swing in and I want to clear out uh, oh, I hit on the far side in my cutting pattern then I put one closer accuracy is a bit off can you check that and I'm checking to see how deep my axe is going in 
then I want to meet up with that uh, that angle of where the deepest point the axe went in with a horizontal cut to them, hopefully. And they've got to be flat, you want them horizontal. Otherwise it causes a whole load of complications with your felling. So not quite there. I need to get down lower and sort that. But you want them as horizontal as possible. If you have two angled cuts, I'll explain that later, but it's extremely dangerous. Your kick back stop won't work basically. So now I've got that first notch cleared out, I can start to open it up much more. And again, I prefer to start my cutting pattern on the far side. That way it's not going to come off the tree and glance into me. Um, you get your feeling for your range on the safe way. I mean, you might break a handle, but uh, rather your handle than your leg. Handles can be replaced. See what I'm doing is making more diagonal cuts and horizontal and when you start to see the chips splitting off like that you know it's time to put in more horizontal cuts So a lot of people would stop right about now and probably should have uh, made that face cut a bit smaller but uh, you see all these chips in here as soon as the street tree starts to fall because those chips are caught uh, the hinge is just going to instantly snap so you've got to make sure those are absolutely cleared out until you've got a perfect angle meeting should look very clean like a chainsaw cut.
You want to take your time and do this properly. Otherwise, oh, you're completely winging it. Won't even get the smallest pieces out. I'm happy at that. But uh, the felling, aim for perfection. And if it doesn't turn out that way, it's okay. But you should be aiming to do a good job, not just uh, leaving the tree down and uh, leaving a face cut that looks the right mess. Now it's the trees in that state, I definitely don't want to walk in front of it. Now for the back cut, I want to meet up with my notch but uh, about 5 centimeters or 2 inches higher and that creates the kickback stop and that's very important so I want to be cutting the back cut about this if the cut is flush, so the back cut has the same horizontal uh, line as the front cut the tree will slide back when it falls due to inertia um, and if it's lower that's even worse but yeah the, the back cut's got to be done properly as well it's not as important about clearing out the chips of course but to uh, making it the right height and uh, in line with this as best as you can if you have the front cut angle like this in the back cut angle like this, when the tree falls, it can twist, like twist round, and then come back, like there was no kick st kick back stop. So, something to look out for. Okay, time for the back cut. Now I don't want to be messing around too much trying to film here, but the plan is is uh, cut the back until it's about to go. I'm not going to cut the hinge and then I'm going to push the tree over maybe using the lever or uh, my arms. The lever's better. Um, so, I guess without further ado. Marking out my spots I want to hit very carefully. So I make the correct hinge. how the tree's moving. If it starts to wobble that's sorry it's very unstable. Oh well that was easy. So it wasn't a textbook job but uh went okay I think you can see there's the hinge fibers have snapped this back cut was a bit high but you see um the plan was is to hit that first and then clear it down a bit lower and that would have been the the two inches but uh, that was unnecessary again it should have been halfway through but uh, I mean just misjudged the size of the notch but uh, a big face cut on that that isn't too bad especially with a leaning tree like that it's better to have a big face cut than a big back cut on a leaning tree like that. The, if you have a big back cut, they tend to barber chair. But anyway, not too bad. My stumps are about six inches off the ground. And the tree went where I wanted it to. So, all in all, not bad. But you can see the the main important thing is I've got fibres across the entire log is my hinge, it's just like a door that controls the direction of the felling 
bite the way down. If I left um, some chips in the cut like that, the hinge will close maybe a centimetre, hit this, and then the hinge will snap. And if the, the trees are still up like that, rather than going down here and the hinge snaps, you've lost control so it could come down here. If that makes sense, but uh, you know, you want to aim for perfection. If it doesn't happen, don't worry, you'll get it next time. But uh, you know, I see too many guys just beavering their way through a tree. They've got uh, tiny chips and uh, no real technique at all. Now, unfortunately, I didn't get to show this because the tree went quite early. Um, but another thing is, if you have a a high stump, say waist tight, where it's comfortable to cut, what ends up happening is your felling notch is up here. And what you want to do when felling is ideally leave the hinge intact. You know, about five centimeters, an inch of wood between that. Uh, and then you want to try and push the tree first. So if your hinge is here, and you're trying to push the tree here, you've got that much space on the up on the trunk for leverage, which is none at all. If your hinge is down here and your trunk and you can push up here, that's far superior. You can push the tree much earlier, which means more of the hinge is intact, and it's a safer felling job overall. Now I consider an essential tool just about if you're going to be doing some serious work and not just a bush crafting, you know, six inch tree, um, take a felling lever. It makes the job so much easier. So with this, you can push the tree up here and that gives you so much more of a mechanical advantage. And uh, you can even redirect with uh, trees with a light lean as well. So take one of these. And if you've not got one, buy one. Another function of this is uh, you put this in the back of a, a saw cut for ch you know chainsawing, and you um, lift it up, and that pushes the tree over. If you're cutting trees that are too small for wedges. But uh, if your tree gets hung up or you want to roll a log, this hook grabs onto the tree and you can roll it. So if you, rather than spending hours and trying to get a tree down, um, you, know, you can quickly get it with this. You can make uh, a stick with a piece of rope to roll the log but this just works so much better and because it's solid steel um, you can apply far more leverage to it without it breaking like the sticks tend to bend Thank you.